Hello, this is Charlene Mosier from Sound Sewing Silverdale, Washington, and the Foth Crave Sewing Center, Lacey, Washington. What we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to take our motifs that are built into our program and move them to our sewing machine to it, sew them out. You can, uh, if you have a Foth sewing machine that allows you to do uh, editing your own decorative stitches and create your own from scratch, you can usually use this software in correspondence to it. Definitely your upper embroidery machine set, so and embroider as well. On the Viking side, we can do the same idea, but unfortunately, it, they won't take motifs from the software to sew out. You can actually take them and embroider them out. Um, you could do both on the FOF, but only embroidery on the Viking. So to do this, it does require you to have the Premier Plus 2 Embroidery Ultra. So that is the full current program at this time that has the digitizing program. And that's where we do all this work from. So I'm going to bring my cursor and I'm going to pulse it so you know where I'm at. Down here, I'm going to click once on the Premier Plus to create that little uh, rose down here. I already have mine open because my computer tends to take a while to open it. But once you click on it once, it will launch the program. If you uh, click on it twice or get impatient like I sometimes do and click on it four or five times, you will actually get that many programs. Every time you click on it, that's how many will open up and it takes it a while. So try to not click on it more than once. The next thing I'm going to do, there's several ways to do this. Uh, we could do start a new element uh, with no picture or load. Uh, you can do a lot of different things. I just simply come down here and press cancel and then come right up to my tab at the top called Draw. And this is where you can draw and make 4QB vector files. And that is the beginning of making a motif or use, working with motifs. So that's why it requires this program. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you where your motifs are. So right up here I have my motifs on my ribbon bar and I'm going to then click on Import Motif. To do that, I get this dialog box here, and I was in here getting ready, so I'm just going to put this back to universal. There we go. Um, actually, usually when it comes up, it comes up at default like this, at my motifs. If you haven't been playing in here and playing with motifs, you will only have one in here, which is this little guy right here. These are ones from past classes or things that I was playing with that have been uh, added. And when I saved them into my motifs, this is where they went. And I could just down arrow here. And as I keep saving, more and more windows will keep adding. So there is no limit that I am aware of in here. I've never been limited as uh, in past softwares of how many I can load in this. As I down arrow here, you'll find that we have uh, universal. These are universal stitches from kind of, you could find from brand to brand out there, or just universal by meaning across the board. You also have Husqvarna Viking, which these would be the non patented uh, epic sewing motifs. And you have Foff, which will also have the non patented Foff creative icon motifs. So if I was to click on the Foff, I come directly over here to find all my categories. The Foff Creative Icon has their uh, stitches in by categories and subcategories in the machine. And you'll find these line directly up with the machine. And in here you will find some of your higher stitches like the stacking stitches, the floating stitches are in here, and your optional feet. But you will not find the other ones like the radiant stitches and the ribbon stitches. You won't find those in here because again, with the patent on them, they will not be included. Those are built only available on the machine. If I do my down arrow again and go to my Husqvarna Viking and do my down arrow again, again, I will find all my, my decorative ones, including my embellishments, my single motifs. And you also will notice that if you own an Epic, you are missing some of them in here. And again, those are ones that are only available on the machine. But the majority of the stitches are here. So these are the categories as you go through your menu on your Epic and find that if you go to letter C, you will get your heirloom stitches. And if you go to you know letter O, that's your single stitch motifs. So those are the ones that you will find in your machine. Let's go back up here to the down arrow and we are going to again go to universal. And again, these are the universal kind of cross the board of different stitches. We are going to play with one particular stitch today which is in my general motifs three. 
and I am then going to come here and do a down arrow and get this guy. I was in here earlier, I thought he would make a great quilting stitch. And so I brought him up. I didn't make any changes to him first. I decided to go and try him out and see what happened. So I then, to get him out, I would go up here to machine stitch. And look at that, right here is export as machine stitch. And so I'm gonna click on him. He's gonna come up and they're gonna say, real size. Now, if you've taken the time in your setup of your software to, tell, to count the millimeter ruler, for your screen, you, this should be pretty accurate to real size for you. Uh, so I was not paying attention to that the first time I did. I got so excited because I want to try this out. I'll show you what happened. Um, I did end up making some changes to it. But you also have two options here. So for the FOFs that hook up to the machine through a cable, so that'd be the Creative Sensation, the Creative Vision, the Creative Sensation Pro, Pro 2, those, uh, create a 4.0, I think I have 4.5. Those machines, I might have missed a couple that hook directly through the computer through a USB cable. You can go right here and send it directly to the machine. I'm not hooked up to the machine, so I'm gonna get this warning saying that I need to make sure that the cable is connected between the computer and the machine and that everything's on. Um, I have the icon, so um, I have to actually do the output here. So I'm gonna click on this output and my stick comes up. Boy, you're thinking. Think, think, think. Here we go. And I already have my USB stick selected because I had it in. And I am going to call this quilting. I'm going to click Save. Um, I forgot to show you something. Let me show you one more thing. Going back in, it saves it as a .spx. That is the FOF. Uh, extension for decorative stitches. Okay, I'm not going to save it again because I just did it. Then I went to my machine and I sewed it out. So if I pull up my picture here, you'll see this is the one I sewed out. I didn't make any changes to it and it was pretty small. I was thinking of making it more like the ones you see on the side. So I decided, well, I'm going to go back and make some more changes. So we'll show you what I did. So we're going to now work on number two, what we did. So let's go back into the design creator. We are going to close this, and I still have my stitch here. I'm going to click on it. Got to click directly on it. There you go, right on the blue line. I'm going to hold down my Control and Shift key on my keyboard. So again, I'm holding down the Control and Shift key, and I'm right here on the corner of my design. And by doing that, it's going to keep it proportionate as I stretch it out. So it kept it proportionate and kept it centered in the hoop here. Then I decided I wanted to try this one out. So I went up to uh, Motif Stitch and I did Export. And now I got real size again. This is the real size right here. And I decided to leave my stitch length. I didn't point that out before, because uh, I'm going to point it out now, is you can decide what stitch length at maximum you want this to be. So I left it at the two. And again, I, export, I exported it out to my machine and I was calling it two and again it's an SPX and it's right on my USB stick so then I took that one to my machine and I sewed it out and that's how I got this one it was a lot better it's more more uh, out and my stitch length though I felt was just still a little too tiny that I just didn't feel it was nice and crisp as I wanted it so I went back to my machine my computer here and I took this same one here again and I could have just left that window up and I did the export as machine but this time I took my stitch length and I told let's make it a max 2.5 millimeters and then I did um, I exported it out again and again I did quilting three and this time when I took it to my machine and opened it up and sewed it out I liked it a lot better it went a lot smoother it looked uh, it's hard to see on here. They look very similar, but when you see, if you were to see my sample in person, it just it looked a lot more crisp on this one than it did on the other one. And since I wanted it to be a quilting stitch, this is uh, being done with a backing, a batting, and a top. And so here's my sample where I did it at 2.5. Literally did this as fast as I demoed it. 
It was really quick, maybe just a couple more minutes to go and put my stick in the machine and pull it up in my sewing. Um, very easy to do depending on what machine you have. You usually just go into your file manager, open up your USB sticks, and your SPXs will be all listed together on your stick. So try it out. Have fun. This is a really great part of the program to really expand your, your uh, sewing machine stitches. So look for us next time, and I will be sure to expand on this again later, maybe doing one from scratch. Have fun.